Mobile Cat here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the EVGA Superclock CPU cooler. Uh, it's a cooler, obviously, by EVGA. Retails for around 50 bucks. It's pretty cool looking, actually. It's uh, all black, which is one of the only coolers I've ever seen besides some of those weird Zalman ones. Um, five heat pipes. Comes with a red LED fan, pretty noisy. Right now, this is it at 100%. Um, I'll show you what it is, what I usually run it at, 50%. 84 CFM for the fan. Moves a good bit of air. You can really feel it. Things about the cooler I like up top. Um, it's not just fins up top, it's like solids, like a little plate of aluminum going across the top. Um, it actually absorbs some of the heat and keeps the air flowing that way and it actually works because you know obviously no air gets out the top so it's really it's really good uh, pretty pretty decently sized actually you got you know plenty of room up here for well not that you'd be using one but a radiator up top so it does make sense if you have a cooler in here um, plenty of room on the side. You don't have to worry about clearance issues. I can't see that being a problem with any case, really. And you know, I have a half nine twelve. The fan, as I said before, pretty noisy. It's red LED. It's a four-pin PWM fan. Um, I think it's nice. I like it. Let's see, it's got a nice EVGA logo on it. Uh, heat pipe direct touch. The cooler is heat pipe direct touch, uh, which means the heat pipes are directly touching the CPU, the IHS on the CPU, and the heat pipes themselves are touching each other, unlike coolers such as the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus, which have the heat pipes spread out with blocks of aluminum in between. All these heat pipes are touching each other and they are touching the top of the CPU. And when I got mine, I checked because I was ready to lap it if I had to, but it actually was fairly smooth, so I didn't even bother. Installation was really easy. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Four screws, one up there, one down there, and then obviously two under the fan. Uh, the only real problem I have about this fan I mean the cooler besides the noise of the fan is the clearance with the RAM. It will block the first RAM slot on most motherboards and it does go down by a good four centimeters, maybe five centimeters. Uh, so it's it pretty blocks it pretty well. Uh, what you'd have to do is these brackets right here, they're just made of I don't know, aluminum probably. Um, what you'd have to do is you'd have to remake them. They clip into the fan up front here. You just have to raise them, pull them out so they push up more. And then you have your first RAM slot back. So this is the fan at 100%. And let's go over here, over to speed fan. Temps right now are 26. We have the pellet stove running. You can sort of see the flame. It's been running for a while. It's very hot down here, so temps might be skewed a little bit. This is what I usually keep it at, 50%. As you can see, the uh, the LEDs, they did go down, or at least I can see it. It looks the same through my camera. Um, much quieter. The loudest ones are these front two fans with this fan at 50%. <coughs> But for today, we'll keep it running at 100. Yeah, you can hear it goes right back up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a little Intel burn test. Note, this is with the fire going. Can't really see it, but it's there, you can hear it. Fire going. So temps would probably be four to five degrees lower, because usually I idle at 20. 20 to 22, anywhere between there, so uh, it'd be safe to say 5 degrees lower than what we're actually going to get. Stress level maximum, start, uh, we'll get CPU Z opened, oh it's 
complaining about memory. Okay, uh, Intel Core i5 2500K, 5 gigahertz on the core. Voltage is 1.33, well, 1.32 is what the regular voltage is, and sometimes it jumps up to 1.33 for no reason. It's already at 34. So uh, we'll let that run. Maximum stress 1.32 volts, 5 gigahertz, 36 degrees. Usually without the pellet stove on, I max out at about 46 to 48 degrees. So we'll see what happens now. I've never seen it above 50. Just a quick overview of my system. Uh, motherboard AS Rock Z68 Extreme 3. RAM is 8 gig Mushkin Black Line. 2133 Cas9 EVGA super, uh, super clock cooler Asus GTX 470 uh, really good clocker actually I get it up to 850 core on the stock cooler 9800 GTX another really good cooler right now it's at 800 core and whatever the shader is I have them linked it's like 16 I think and memory is fairly high as well. I think it's 1200. Um, PCP and C silencer Mark II 750 silver certified power supply, big supply. I like it. I have a 750 gig Caviar Black that I just got for $45. Works perfectly, brand new. I mean, it wasn't even out of the box, and I got it for 45 bucks. Two terabyte Italki. 7200 RPM drive where I store all my my big files, games, movies, that kind of stuff. Uh, dual 160 gig drives. I have those in RAID 1 for backup of my files, Word documents, uh, important things like that, music, stuff of that nature. And uh, dual 150 gig Velociraptors, RAID 0 for my uh, Windows 7 installation. Case is the Half 912. Pretty cool DVD drive, dual front red, LED fans, dual top 120s, a rear 120, and I also have a sound card wedged in between there. Um, Audigy 2. I just keep it in there because uh, if I ever need extra sound ports, I just use that. Um, yeah, let's go check on the temps. Uh, 45 degrees right now. It's only been running for a few minutes though. Voltage still 1.32. Clocks still five gigahertz. Maximum stress. We'll let this run a little more. <clears throat> so another thing about the cooler that I I do like, but I don't know. I don't know. See, I like it, but I don't like it. It's blocked up at the top, so if any dust gets stuck, there is a little bit of space. It's like it's not perfectly smooth. It is kind of bumpy. So dust could get wedged in between the underside of this and there's no way to get it out without using water or something, but that leaves residue and if it dries it'll leave metals on there and it'll just decrease thermal performance. So dusting might be kind of tricky. I, the only part that's dusty in mine is the top, but other than that, it's pretty good. Heat pipes, um, this one feels pinched. That one feels pinched, and that's about it. These three feel like the heads are just normal. Up here, that one feels pinched, that one feels pinched, and that one does too. Um, I don't know what it means for this cooler, but on the old Hyper 212 Plus that I used to run, uh, they were pinched because they filled them with liquid. And what's interesting is that this one, these two aren't filled with liquid. Oh, I think I just got it. Only one side, they fill the liquid in on one side and then pinch that side. So they're all filled with liquid, but just on different sides. Oh, okay, cool. You and me just figured something out together. EVGA logo is pretty nice. 
plenty of room back here. I mean, you could you could even add a second fan. Uh, there's a hole right there and a hole right there, and they don't officially support it, and they don't officially have brackets for it, but it'd be fairly easy to make. So, here we go, final check for temp. So, got it past one run, uh, one run of Intel burn test, 46 degrees. <clears throat> like I said, I've never seen it get above 48, 49 degrees. And this is 46 with the pellet stove on. One full run of Intel burn test. Um, as you can see, I'm using all 7.7 .7 gigs of RAM. CPU 100%. All four cores have been going for quite a while. So, it's pretty stressful. 1.32 volts. 5 gigahertz. Oop, just went up to 47. So, all in all, I'd say this cooler is a very good price for 50 bucks. <clears throat> I don't know any coolers that would beat it for the price point. The only cooler I know of that would contest with it would be either the NHD14 or that new one that just came out that even beats the DH14. Uh, I don't know what it's called. And the H100, obviously. But liquid, you know. So, thank you for watching. I uh, hope this was helpful. This is one of three reviews I've found online, mine being the third. Not too much documentation on this particular cooler, so I'd buy it again, definitely. If I was ever going to go air-cooled again, or ever had a black themed computer definitely get that again it's well worth it temps over here just hit 48 and uh, this is usually where it tops out at the 48 so thank you for watching and please subscribe